Welcome to Your Cochrane Right Now. This is a weekly podcast all about the best town in the entire world, Cochrane, Alberta. Lauren, you are back from Las Vegas. Ooh la la. <laughs> yes, I am. It's a lot cooler here than it is in Vegas. <laughs> yes. Like way cooler. Was like it way 20? hot there? It was like 36 degrees. Holy. Yeah, like almost too hot. Yeah. Especially when you're walking up and down the strip and there's oh, like hordes no. of people. I know, I sound like a complainer <laughs> right now, but so many people and you're just jammed in with the people yeah. and so many smells. You know what I mean? Like just like everybody... Yeah. Smokes, yeah, yeah. And Smoking's like and we here in Cochrane, we don't appreciate how clean it is, how and fresh the and air fresh, is, and no one's smoking other than the smoking areas, right? Yeah, there is just a free for all. Oh, everyone! Right? It's funny because as soon as I came back, like I had clearly got a little bit of sun because I'm super tanned, oh, you right? Did? Oh, yes. I, I know, I know, yes. super tanned. Yeah. Uh, I tan really, really well. It's like a darker shade of white. Yeah. But uh, somebody had said to me, <laughs> they're like, shell. "Oh, did you get? Yeah, did you get a little bit of fresh air?" And I was like, "I don't know how fresh it was. Yeah. I don't know how fresh the air is in yeah. Las Vegas because <laughs> yeah, it's pretty stinky." But uh, it was yeah, it was a really nice little mini vacay. I had to ring in a brand new decade. Yeah. So, nice, yeah. 20. Nice. Yeah, really 20. Good. Exactly. Yeah. I said goodbye to my teenage years. Oh. I'm officially an adult. Nice. Congratulations. Thank you. You can go down and drink next year. Next year. Next I'll year. have to go back again yeah. next year, for sure. So it's huge here in Cochrane right now. Something I think a lot of us thought would never, ever happen. We've been talking about it for probably decades. The 1A22 intersection has begun. Yeah. The ramps began today the east ramp and uh i'm i'm a sunset resident so honestly i'm a little scared <laughs> did you get stuck in the one way traffic already no so no? when they say oh it's going down to one lane it's like right now it's kind of that side lane as you're going up the 22. okay so when you go home from work you're gonna yes. get stuck in that oh yes yeah. probably <laughs> yes it's that just that side lane right now there's a couple of people out there Looking at stuff, not really a lot of dirt moving, oh, okay. but you got to imagine things might get nasty, but it'll be so worth it. Like, yeah, that's the thing. So, yes, there was, of course, comments made on our social media like, oh, this should have happened 20. Huh? I know, I know, right? People complaining, yeah. but this should have happened 10, 20 years ago, that kind of thing. But yeah. the, you know what? The point is, it is happening now. Things are being done. There's progress being made, and it's going to be kind of a pain sometimes during the construction process process yes. but man oh man when this is done it's gonna be so so sweet it's just gonna be it'll be fun being a Cochrane resident at that time too because you'll be like oh I was here when that was just a <laughs> mess of an area you guys have ramps now you don't know but it will be incredible and just with that and the 1a stuff that's going on all yeah. the time if those two sections work will traffic really be that bad here in town I don't know. And what will we complain about what anymore? What will we complain about? There's got there'll be something new, right? There's I don't so many know different what, neighborhoods though. going up. You're you're I don't know. I don't know what, because honestly, that's the only thing. Like before, everybody would complain about COVID and all the restrictions. Yes. That's kind of gone on the back yeah. burner now. And now it's just traffic. So like well, I honestly the traffic don't know. Is not going away for a, no, maybe a it'll just while. go back to the train. <laughs> exactly. You and know? then soon we'll get ramps like over or under trains, like <laughs> in Calgary when you go underneath oh, the sea train. Oh, that'd be so fun. Yeah. yeah. Except for I think they talked about that before, and that was going to cost like a bajillion dollars. <laughs> That's so. taxpayers' issues. Yeah. We'll right? just raise the taxes. <laughs> exactly. Oh, wait. Yeah. And uh, Cochran was in national news this weekend, not for. A great reason, though. We we lost a very, uh, I wouldn't call him famous, but a very well-known yeah. person. People knew his name, that's for sure. For sure, yeah. So David Milgard uh, passed away suddenly, actually, over the weekend. So, um, you know, famous name, definitely. Yes. Somebody, yes. a very well-known Canadian. Um, I grew up hearing his name. I grew up in a home, you know, my parents are news junkies. Yes. Yes. Uh, growing up, you know, listening to the news, watching the news. So, um, of course, he was a big name in Saskatchewan because he was convicted, wrongfully convicted um, of a murder he didn't commit. And he spent 20 
23 years. 23, 23 years. years in jail for a crime that he didn't commit, a really, really vicious, horrible yes. crime. Um, so he did that jail time. Um, he did get out of jail and he did, um, he was exonerated. Mm -hmm. So he obviously, his name was cleared and whatnot. Um, so he's been out of jail for quite a few years, but he actually has been living in Cochrane for yeah. the last several years. Uh, he's got a family, he's got children here. Um, I had the opportunity of interviewing him just over a year ago. And, and you guys just went to his house just to like hang out with yeah. him. I bet you that guy could have told you a bajillion stories. You know, it was cool. Yeah, I probably spent a good hour, hour and a half, I would say, with him. And it was just so incredible just hearing just like a little piece of his story and all of the things that he was doing because he was just actively working on trying to you know help other people who were wrongfully con convicted because there yeah. are other people in Canada who are faced with a very similar situation Jeez. and that was kind of his mission um, unfortunately you know at 69 years old his life was just taken you know a little bit early little, too yeah. short so uh, really really sad news but um, yeah just really Really incredible experience to be able to to have a chance to meet him and interview him. Exactly right, and it was awesome for him to finish up his life in a beautiful place like Cochrane. Yeah, so that's uh, lots of stories have also been coming into the newsroom because obviously. He was part of Cochrane, so a lot of people knew him, a lot yeah. of people were friends with him, so just them reaching out, telling us touching stories, it's really, For really sure. cool to hear. Yeah. So uh, we got some other big news today, As our, the what day would that have been on? Monday? The construction of the new-ish inclusive park, the new-ish yeah. inclusive playground at the Centennial Park, which is like the outdoor rink to Tim Bannister Memorial exactly. Rink, right next to it, that red and blue park. So do you call it the Red and Blue Park or the Centennial Park? Like, we just call it the Red Park. Oh, I didn't know it was called the Centennial Park before I wrote this story. I didn't either. <laughs> I knew it had a name. Yeah. Like, I knew it had an official name. Yeah. I just didn't know what the name was because I thought it was just, like, I mean, it's just the Red Park. That's what everybody calls yeah. it. Well, we're more uh, fans of the Spider-Man Park because it's red and blue like a suit. You get Is it? Is that the one over in Glenbow? No, that's the one they're working. It's oh. the Red and Blue Park. There's not a spider structure it's, there. It's the colors of his suit. But there's but there's one. One in Glenbow that actually that has, has like a spider, spider web. So my kids call that one the Spider Man one. I know it's not red, oh. but it's so you're confusing <laughs> me right now. But uh, that park, of course, the one side got updated, I believe, in 2014. It was a few. Well, oh, was it no, it was just a couple years, years ago, ago because they have the trampolines, the little yes, trampolines, the, and the cool swings, right? That yeah. anyone can go on yeah. and all really that cool. stuff. And that park was there. I grew up on the east end of Cochrane, so that one side that they just started working on has been the same for forever right yeah. they have the rubbery like but you're also like tires. 10 so it's yes. not it's really not that old <laughs> yes but man it's cool that they are updating it we've had a lot of questions asking wasn't it also already inclusive, inclusive yeah. and it was right yeah. like you could take a, a wheelchair up there there's a lot of ramps and that kind of stuff but in the years they have better equipment yeah. right and this is really cool because the town teamed up with the charity yeah so a lot of it was covered by fundraising yeah very cool and of yeah. course it's yeah there was a little bit of wear and tear and whatnot so obviously the upgrade's going to be exactly. much appreciated and it's going to be even a way better park so it already is probably one of the most popular parks oh, in town yeah. no it's always so, bumping yeah. yeah oh yeah and well, and the thing is too is, as I'm sure you can appreciate, especially when you have like really little kids and you had like one napping kid and then a toddler. It's nice because there's the parking lot is so close to yes. that park. Like that was something you always had to take into account when you have little kids. Yeah. It's like I need to go there, but I have a kid who's sleeping, or the snacks are so close with the, yeah. your car. And there's right? a porta potty there. Yeah. That is, is key. Huge. That's key. Huge. Yes, all the factors yes. when you're going to a park during the day. Yes, so. and of course with young kids, right? Like they're, there's not a lot of climbing there, right? So if the kids want to toddle around, you know they're not going head over tea kettle off yeah. this park because it's meant to be yeah. for everyone. So I'm really excited to see the new technology. Yeah. in these apparatuses and stuff. And the equipment is actually going to the developing country, yeah. which is oh, really cool, cool as well. So kids will be able to enjoy that park forever, the Spider-Man Park. <laughs> 
What are we going to call the one over in Glenbow then? I don't the spider know. structure. No one goes to that one. I that one's a great one because it's really sheltered from like you feel like you're out of town. There's no traffic noise from that one. <laughs> you should go check it out. Anyway, uh, we got to see some cool cars this weekend. Cruise Cochrane began again, and uh, it's always nice to see. Of course, Cochrane. We have some. Uh, we have some very cool car owners here. In we town. do. It, it always makes me a little jealous driving around in my 1992 station wagon, but uh, <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. They usually do it for a good cause as well. They're raising money for this and that, you know. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. Like you know, I think the people who own those really nice cars, like they all winter long, they're just itching to bust oh, these vehicles yeah. out. Like they're just in their garages all winter, like shining them and just like waiting <laughs> for the nice weather. Yeah. They go for the cruise. I think they went down to Black Diamond for the very first cruise. So they're yeah. always going to these really scenic, nice drives, like with mountain views and stuff. So I, man, it's, I don't have a cool car either. Would you ever buy one? Like, would you ever splurge and get a cool car that you can drive three months of the year here in town? If I had like extra yeah. cash just sitting around, yeah. you know, I think you need the extra garage space too. I wouldn't want to give up. Like I am a princess in the winter. I don't want to scrape right. windows. That just kind of in stuff. the winter though. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> now or during the summer. Yeah. But. Yeah, I'm only a princess yeah, in the winter, exactly. but I wouldn't want to give up my garage spot. You know what I mean? Like or if you had a for, for a fancy car, so you need like a, a three yeah. garage, right? Or Your, four, or whatever, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I right. Don't know. Yeah, I'm sure you can get that really cheap in Cochrane oh, right now. Oh, guaranteed. Right. <laughs> and uh, this is really cool because, of course, if you have a fancy car or a normal car, things are costing a lot of money right now, right? It's mm -hmm. expensive to drive. They're expecting gas prices to continue to rise. So biking is going to be the word of the summer. And making sure your kids know how to ride a bike safely, especially near roads and stuff, can be challenging. So yeah. the Kiwanis Club is putting on a really cool bike safety day and it was so popular, they sold out sold out, I think it's free, yeah. of spots really quick and they're like, no, we need more. Yeah. So they opened up 40 more spots and I think this is going to be extremely popular. Oh, it's, it's always a really popular event and it's going to be happening over at the Pump Park, just like nice. across from us here yeah. at Cochrane now and uh, yeah just they do a bunch of cool things there and you can get like a free helmet and you can get some free things there and just really good tips I mean it's so kids are out on their bikes non-stop oh, yeah. right now and even if you drill it into your kids heads to be safe I mean it's nice maybe kids don't always listen to their parents yeah. so it's nice for them to maybe get some advice from other people and that's one of the coolest features of growing up in Cochrane I always found was your son's getting at the age now where He's old enough to ride to his friend's house, right? Yeah. And there's so many pathways. You know he's going to be safe and all that stuff. So it's just, it's awesome to be a bike kid here in town. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I've never been good on a bike, so maybe I'll, I'll go on one of uh, these safety well, things. Well, you just... fit the age category, ding, ding, ding. right? <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, we, <laughs> we debated talking about this story, but uh, as a journalist, sometimes <laughs> you have to cover stuff that you might not necessarily choose to cover. That's very so true. We had a group come to us here at Cochrane Hill saying, hey, we got some cool projects going on. Uh, would you like to talk about it? And we're like, yes, of course. And Lauren, you got the story and it's for a group called Pheasants Forever. Mm -hmm. Right? And you thought... Well, you are our resident animal I love lover the here. Yeah. They're so cute. Anytime there's an animal story to yeah. cover, like we all kind of have our beats, right? Yeah. We all know, like, you know, this kind of story, you know, Noel's going to cover yeah. it. This kind of story, Candace is going to cover it. Any kind, anytime there's an animal story, like 100%, that has got yeah, your name on it. Right. 100%. So, this particular story, as soon as we saw, Pheasants Forever, like, hands I down. I love Pheasants that Forever. Is, Great. <laughs> that is cute for parts. Eric, yeah. like no questions asked. Yeah. So I was like, Eric, this is for you. Happy birthday. Perfect. So I took it. I was excited. I'm like, this is an awesome group. I'll be honest. I didn't know who they were. Right? Me uh, neither. And that's what being a journalist is all about, doing some research, all that stuff. So we set up an interview with uh, one of their presidents and I'm clicking through their websites. I'm like, uh-oh. They're... They're an advocacy group for animals, but uh, they're pretty down with uh, hunting, said, <laughs> said peasants. So I'm clicking through this. I go, oh, my gosh. Like, this is a hunting group. So I run over to Lauren. I'm like, I'm not doing this story. And what did you say? What did you say? 
This is on the same level as. <laughs> It. I didn't say it exactly in those words. You said, <laughs> well, Eric, being a journalist is meaning you have to do sometimes stories that aren't in your wheelhouse. I've Which had to do true. sports before. <laughs> exactly. Everyone knows I'm not a huge sports fan. Right. So for years and years, I, it's not did, the same. I did news and sports, right? No, it is. It's similar in the sense. It's, not, <laughs> it's similar in the sense that you know, I I didn't have a, I don't have a passion for sports. I yeah. appreciate sports lovers, I really do, but I I don't have that passion. Like yeah. I I'm I don't sit around and watch sports. So for years and years, because I didn't want to mess up sports people's names, I would spend <laughs> ten to fifteen minutes watching TSN so I could learn those sports names, so I could sound like I knew what I was talking yeah. about on the air, yeah. but. So, yeah, I'm going to compare the two. Yeah. Yeah. So now it's like a, it's a funny story at the station, yeah. right? Like, of course, they do do great work, and I had a great they interview do. with them and yeah, all that jazz. Absolutely. But uh, I'm not heading out to shoot any birds anytime soon. But it's just... It does make for a really funny story. But you know what? It makes you more oh, well-rounded. Yes. You're a better journalist. Exactly. And uh, you know what? We <laughs> we think it's great. Exactly. <laughs> great. Anyway, that's everything that's been going on in Cochrane. Nice to have you back, Lauren. Of course, anytime you want to grab this, it's up on your favorite podcast services. And uh, we'll talk to you again next week. You betcha.